I think especially when we implement Dagnite, um, Dagnite will be the embodiment of chaos preparation of crypto. Like Dagnite is a protocol that will be, um, I think of it as World War Three resilient. Like if there's a break, a cyber war, and everything is, uh, the internet is experiencing uh, real chaos, then I believe Casper or Dagnet can withstand this, but but not if you're using Casper through block explorers. You need to use it uh, much more natively in order to, you know, you need to have direct um, uh, direct access to to the inner workings to the back end. Uh, of course, if if you can, if you have the the technical knowledge. What's up, Crypto Crew, and welcome back. Or if this is your first time, I'm Captain Crypto Might, actively escaping the matrix, scoping out the crypto ocean. So if you like your odds, get on the boat, stay up to date, thumbs up, and join the hunt. Into the boat, Crypto Crew. In this next section of the Vlad interview, Jonathan Sampolinski had Yoni explains Dag Night. But before we get into today's vid, always remember when it comes to Caspa, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Just before this bull run starts we've decided to partner up with caleb and brown a leading crypto brokerage known for trust and results worldwide you get a real personal broker 24 7 no bots no endless tickets you can trade over 250 digital assets. Caspa is included. You can enjoy straightforward withdrawals with no hidden fees and benefit from institutional level security and experience. So if you want calm, competent help navigating your bull run, check out Caleb and Brown with the link in the description box below. As always, Crypto Crew, thanks so much for your consideration and support in advance. And may the Lord Jesus Christ bless you all. Dag Knight is the final evolution of the protocol. So let's start with uh, with Bitcoin. Let's go back to Bitcoin protocol and call it in the more academic uh, name Nakamoto Consensus. So Nakamoto Consensus, the longest chain wall. You have a, a slowly growing tree where usually it's a chain, one chain in the tree, and you always pick the longest uh, chain and you discard any other branches. The ghost DAG the generalization of this dictates the following structure. You have a graph, a DAG of blocks growing in one direction. And in order to make sense of this graph and to recover consistency and consensus, you order it roughly according to the heaviest K cluster. I argue that if you, Vlad, look at this, uh, maybe not this block DAG visualizer, but uh, a block DAG that I will draw to you, you with your naked eyes will be able to identify what is the honest group of blocks. But for you to be able to do so, you will immediately ask me, hey, how do I know whether this is an attacker or not? You, you will see the DAG, the graph of blocks, and you will say, hey, I only see a mess of things. How am I supposed to know if this block is an attacker block or not? And I will tell you, honest miners, wherever they are um, hidden in the graph, are able to create blocks that are not too disconnected. So if I tell you uh, the delay in the network is such that honest blocks are only one or two blocks away from the from the main chain and other than that they are compounding on one another then you will look for not a chain but a two three blocks thick chain it's always connecting like at most two three rounds to the back and so i know that this is uh, the two three chain this represents with high probability the honest chain similar to the practice that you would do when you look at a at force in bitcoin you would say hey i, I know that this one chain is probably the honest chain this one is too short you assume 51 percent honest and you say okay the probability that this two three uh, block thick chain that is heavier than other candidates the chances that it is not the honest chain is exponentially low as i wait a few more rounds so if for some reason i don't know electromagnetic purples the internet breaks down for for uh or, or at least there's a, a large disconnect and now blocks are propagating um, with a much larger K or much larger latency than you will have anticipated, then the protocol sees it to be secure, similarly to Bitcoin, which sees it to be secure under the same circumstance. So Bitcoin and currently Caspa are synchronous. Their security relies on an upper bound on the latency. The Dagnag protocol, which I co-authored with Michael, it's a result of the question that I posed to Michael, which is how can we get rid of this parameter K and allow the network to be secure regardless. So I don't want to have this to need to rely on the dev's good estimation of K. Rather, I want the protocol to be secure, wh whatever K is, whatever the parameter is. Bitcoin maximizes the weight or the uh, it chooses the heaviest one chain. Ghost DAG chooses the heaviest K chain 
or K cluster, but let's call it K chain, K K wide chain. Dagnite before Mac before choosing the maximum K chain or K cluster, it chooses the minimal K for which the maximal K cluster is at least 50%. If Bitcoin chooses the maximum uh, one cluster or one chain and goes dag chooses the maximum k cluster dagnet does not know what k is we want to get rid of that of that assumption so before maximizing the k cluster dagnet solves a minimax problem of finding the minimal k for which the maximum k is capturing the majority of the graph is heavier than 51 percent the implication of this you no longer need to assume that the latency in the network in the internet is less than than something predetermined. And so if the, if, the, if the internet is very smooth, the confirmation times of transactions are very smooth, very fast. Like it can be like a very, very few seconds. And if the internet is very slow because there's some systemic collapse, lots of network hiccups, then the network will still be secure. And it will be the only network that's secure against 50% uh, attacks because it's the only protocol that's secure against up to 50% attacks um, without assuming any latency bound. This is not a, just a nice feature. If you want to prepare this this monetary system to a global all-out war or, or some other catastrophe like electromagnetic pulse where the internet really suffers from real uh, breakdowns, then I, I don't see other protocols that will survive this other than Dagnet. Right, so can you elaborate on why you think Dagnite is going to be the only protocol that survives cyber war or catastrophic events. What is it about Dagnite that makes it so resilient? The fact that it has no security parameter baked into it, so that even if the internet suffers serious uh, breakdowns, if the entire world is completely disconnected and we're back to the Stone Age, then it's not interesting, of course. In, in the middle phase, where we're not in the Stone, we're not back to the Stone Age yet, but the internet is is still somewhat operational in the sense that you can communicate uh, but not with the uh, assumed latency of other networks and you can't assume any uh, good uh, bound on the latency then all the synchronous protocol will break and caspa is the only 50 percent like 49 percent byzantine fault tolerance protocol that does not assume a bound so let's say there's the internet suffers an on and off uh, state where the network has latency of 10 seconds and then 10 minutes and then 10 seconds and then again 20 minutes and then 10 seconds and 10 minutes in this scenario bitcoin and ethereum and any synchronous network would a synchronous consensus would fail would break just the, the tree of bitcoin would fragment of course it depends on uh, ge geographical centralization if, if 51 percent is in is in the usa and there's no fragmentation uh, therein then there's only two factions in the network but even two factions in the network means it's unclear which one wins and then an attack where if there's three civil like three factions in this global war then one third can override Right, it's enough for for one third to override the, the two the two competing factions. So the security threshold of Bitcoin deteriorates very fast if the internet delay starts going below five, six, seven, eight minutes. Right, and for other proof of stake networks and for Casper today, which is also a synchronous network, it deteriorates very fast after 10, 20 second latency. It's already uh, breaking their latency assumptions. But with Dagnet, that you have no latency assumption, and of course, confirmation times would be much longer. But assuming you're interested more in in, in storing, you know, in in making sure you're transactions are stored and there's no backwards attack you can't reverse history you can just you're willing to wait for confirmation time uh, but you just want to know that your previous transaction and, and previous utxos are are safe then dagnite or any hypothetical partially synchronous protocol that assumes no latency bound and that is resilient to 49 percent uh, attacks will be the only one that survives ariel pina says when can we expect dagnite to be implemented I'm wary of answering this. It depends on how much we can scale the core efforts. And and we currently prioritize the people design. And the reason, by the way, we decided to prioritize the smart contract design, it's a bottleneck for, for other builders and to scaling up the other activity in, in Casper, right? If we focused on, on Dagnite, then other people wouldn't have uh, a way to build things on top of Casper. We had this intuition that it's better to postpone Dagnite, even though it's very late, uh, extremely late on the timeline in order to release first the bottleneck to allow other people to contribute to interesting activity on top of CASPA. So that's the context of why Dagnet is taking very, very uh, slow. Our aspirations 
are still to uh, launch these as one hard fork together with the B probes because these are two orthogonal modules. It shouldn't be complicated to to unite them. I'm wary of saying saying exact timelines. We did commit to releasing a yellow paper at the end of August about the B prob design. So I'm I'm not sure like uh, Michael forgives me for this for committing uh, like that early. Given that we have this soft deadline, then we are focused on that. But we are also in parallel. There are some people in core that uh, are working on Dagnite uh, still in slow pace. I'm sure that once they ramp up the speed and have more like progress to show, then the timeline will be clear in this, be able to give more concrete numbers. Again, Crypto Crew, this Bitcoin Takeover podcast with Jonathan Sampolinski was a seven and a half hour session. So much more to come in a vid near you. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Stick around. Fix your mind before you get to the grind. And with that said, let's continue to escape the matrix. Let's continue to be on the lookout for the next big thing here on the crypto ocean. Grow in grace and let's make some crypto waves. Say I.